coming to you from the M&M Exterior Studio in Nooksville, Virginia, this is Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle, the introvert's extrovert. She talks to people so you don't have to. For now. programmer so but it for, is for christmas keep talking but i'm just gonna yeah something. oh yeah you're fine for christmas he bought um an xbox for us to make us closer like oh. right when i think i was i was pregnant or i or i was i think i was pregnant with grace and i was like to make us closer to, to, for us to be closer he's yeah. like yeah we'll play games together it'll be great you know and he's just like smiling and then he bought me my favorite game of all time which is spyro okay oh man or was it that yeah i think that it was did he buy it for xbox i think it anyway or whatever i don't know how he did that but it was spyro and then i played it once and that well because is that like a, a Skylander? It's like Isn't a little that a Skylander dragon. guy? Yeah. It's a little dragon that Aww. goes and like it's like you know, he goes in these different worlds and he's getting coins and I don't know. Yeah. And so it's anyway, kinda old school. It was yeah, it was an old school game. My it was my first game where I spent an entire winter break without Ooh. hardly showering playing it. <laughs> for it's like hours. the big bang episode where Penny gets all uh, into Yes. But then that's when I was like, I got scared of how deep I got into it. I was like, never again. <laughs> I did Spyro winter break of like, whatever, eighth grade, never again. <laughs> and then my husband so bought it for me and it'll happen in five years. I'm going to probably have another Spyro dip, but it'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were you guys talking about video games? Yes. So Close after, it real quickly, yeah. Well, after Riley was born... We lost our life because we were like, oh my gosh, we have to take care of this baby 24 seven. I've never, and we, for the first few months, we, or first couple, whatever, we just went to bed as a family. Like I would nurse her and we would just, you just fall asleep. Just go up there. Like, and so then I didn't know how to put her to bed. And then we were so desperate that it got to the point where like, we need to put her down and then we need to have a life. And so I remember like we would put her down and then we'd go downstairs and because it was, I think before Netflix. And so we would like sit there, but we started playing the Wii. We had pulled the Wii out that we hadn't played in like five years. And we, we played Mario from like beginning to end to beat it. And so every night it was like, put her, it's like now the equivalent of binge watching TV, but it would be like, we got to go down. And then it was good because we were teamwork. Like we were playing together and And it's like a fun thing to do. And it like reconnects you guys because everybody who knows, like when you have a a baby and that disrupts everything in the relationship, like it's, I mean, it's a blessing. Babies are amazing. Of course. But But yeah, but that's the part. And that's the part that people don't talk a lot about. It's like, oh, oh, I'm so excited. I mean, I've told people, I'm sure I said this on our last podcast. We talked about the parenting. It's like, if you're miserable for the first two years, like that's normal. It's totally. And I mean, I need to think of a way to say that's not as (gasps) negative. (laughs) But yeah, that's the thing is like finding ways to reconnect, even if it's something as silly. It looks like he's going to pee, but he's just. Except he did the other day on a baby blanket. We were at a picnic with our (gasps) friends and they had their blanket laid out and she was sitting there with the baby and yes. he literally walked over to the baby blanket and peed on like started to pee on oh, it and then we screamed like no 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 he's so crazy but yeah i think finding something to do with your spouse even something like a video game is yes. just important because you just and like you have I said, to like nerd out together yeah some, like something, something where you guys fun. where it's fun and you're like it's like your little adorable dirty secret of like Ooh. nerding mm. out you know yeah, yeah like something. that's why i like watching the um so we don't read like read the stuff well i don't i but like going to see the movies like the comic yes. movies yes. i know that's not everyone's thing but i just like that it's something I love them <laughs> jeremy and i can do together <laughs> he's having to fix the blanket for hankers because he's very specific with his oh I, I i listen to a lot of business and mindset podcasts mm-hmm. But I like this one as like a break Mm -hmm. where I'm just like, I just want to like let my mind, whatever. I want to just listen to some people talking and not think about anything. And Like you don't have to take, I've told people when they're like, oh, I just don't have time. I'm like, this is like an in the car podcast. Because even with your notes today, it's not like someone needs to write down. No. It's that when they're, they're just like, you're right. I do need to trust myself and like, I do need to not, it's like just stuff that you fill yourself with. Yes, absolutely. Move on with. It's true. Thank you for that. Yeah. No, I think I I like it. And yeah, you can only find your direction 
as you do. Yeah, that's it. Like, and that's what I have to keep telling myself of my own business. And you it's can like, only find your direction when you, as you do, as you do, like, as you walk it out, you can only you find wa- your direction <gasps> as you walk it as out. As you walk it out. Cause you can't walk in any direction standing still. You can't <gasps> walk in any direction standing still. Is that <laughs> so your quote? Good. I suppose so. It just came out. Quote right? Right? Oh. Mark this time down, honey. Cause yes. that's a great quote. Say it, it one more time. So okay. we can, so if we edit it, we can like yes. make it just like, boom, you said it and done. Boom. You can't walk in any direction standing still. We have we're very good friends with our pastor and associate pastor. Like yeah. our associate pastor is like a friend friend. Like his yeah. wife is one of my like besties. Yeah. So I love them. We have awesome conversations, but I don't think I actually I've talked about doing a podcast with my pastor mm-hmm. because the way I talk and ask questions and I'm like not totally sold out on certain things, so it's good discussion. I've always yes. said I want everyone to hear our discussions because yes. it's so good. So good. <gasps> It is. And I feel like he is the definition of what a pastor should be. He's not in it for building the numbers of a church and right. all that. Like he's in the in the business of people um people growing. People growing. And it's like, you know, it you could be something like if it, with that. the theology, it's like getting people, you know, like their souls. He's right. worried about the soul stuff. Right. And so now with hot topic issues like politics, of course yes. you don't talk about politics in church, but there's a there's a heart thing that goes on. And he's trying to move <sighs> the needle. So the instead heart. of saying, I'm like this like the immigrant stuff, like instead yes. of doing a whole sermon where it's gonna turn off, let's say, the older generation. Yeah. It's he's he's doing th- he's in it for the long game. So yeah. he's not trying to be like, I'm over here because he knows that those people then will be like, well, you're too far. Over. You're too far over. I can't. And it's like, it's just, just let's little. just move the needle just a little, a little, bit. little and open and, up your heart. And he's a bridge builder. So <gasps> he like in, in I our denomination. Not like an engineer, but like, yeah. Uh-huh. Like an emotional metaphorical bridge. Yeah. Well, because well, like it's a, it's a, cons- it's, yeah, that makes sense. it's more of a conservative <laughs> like church. <laughs> Yeah, you need some. You need the di- the difference. You know, it's funny. Is I grew up with my family. Mm-hmm. Half of them were Democrats, and half of them are Republicans. Mm-hmm. And we're not going political. However, I yeah. grew up with a loving family, loving each other, being having different. every single big family dinner. Everyone was hollering, disagreeing, and then hugging and kissing and saying, "Love you, see you later." So like, was it good discussions? Yes, that's what's very, so like, good. Fun. It's like debate. Yes, and that's like my mom and I were talking. Like that's what we need to get back to is people yeah. having differences of opinions, but loving and respecting them yes. and talking about it. And that's what I love about our yeah. pastor is that he might have certain views in one area. Mm-hmm. But instead of assuming that the other people who think differently than him are either wrong or, or well they evil. or evil or yeah. like well they just haven't done the work that I've done. He says they've done the same work I've done. So in his context it's they've read the Bible, they've read scripture, they've right. you know prayed about it, they've right. learned They're about it. Same. We've just come to two different conclusions about something. Yeah. And he is respectful and loving and he leans more into it. Yeah. So we actually even talked about doing a podcast with someone who thinks different than him. Oh. And like talking about it. And that's why with him, like I can still go to church, you know, with yeah. there and him, even if I'm like, well, I think, I think I think differently about this yeah. because I see that he's doing the work. Right. And so I don't feel the need to like run away. If you're not. Uh, like, it, or, or, or not even run away, but just even to say, uh, like, I feel like I can have those discussions and say, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking this and I'm not. Yeah. Oh, well, because what I used to feel was that if I would tell people I didn't know how I felt about something, the response was, well, you just need to pray about it. Like, oh, that's okay that you don't think that. You know, you just yeah. haven't, it basically, even if they didn't say this, it was oh. like, you just haven't done the work. I've got a quote I want to read. Yeah. No, go but ahead. But you'll eventually, it, what I kept hearing was, you just aren't there yet because you haven't done the work. And mm-hmm. once you do, you will arrive at this point. So it's okay that you don't think – we're allowed to disagree. Right. But one day, you, when you've done it, you'll end up here. And I always was like, but what if I don't? don't end up there. And yes. so then I'm wrong and then I've seen things play out like in you know the world where it's like, yep, that happened. Someone came out with a difference of opinion and they're suddenly you know horrible. Yeah. And so I love seeing my pastor like – lean into those differences yes so anyway. that is interesting oh yeah. my god i love that leaning into the differences i think yeah. that's that's so important because we do need to change what's your quote? culture okay well it's okay you guys might not want to air this it's uh yeah, i have yeah half the stuff i was just saying i was like Ugh. yeah because yeah. it's okay hang on let me find it. i took a screenshot and sent it to my mom because okay now 
I'm just, this is, you can I love it. it. We'll be silent. Just write it. Okay. So <laughs> my mom frustrated me a lot because when I was doing my biggest struggles, she was like, and my mom is a hippie, but in a, and she's like, oh, well, I'll pray for you. And I'm like, mom, don't freaking pray, pray for me. Okay. That's not doing anything. <laughs> Oh, girl. <laughs> I know. I got so mad at her. And I, this is why, though. I'm going to yeah, read this yeah. to you guys. This is, this is, this is like put my, there's this guy, John Pavlovitz, and I love him. He's like mm. a very, I love his, his, he's, he's religious. He's like a pastor too, and he shares yeah. things, and it's very interesting. So this is what he said To contend that God heals when we pray for those who are terribly sick or physically damaged is to imagine a creator who needs to be convinced. Yes. It is to paint an image of God who, through already fully aware of the gravity of the situation and the worry of loved ones and reality of the injury, refuses to move until we ask him to. Prayer appeals almost um, almost become spiritual GoFundMe campaigns where we're told that if we just get enough people praying, healing will happen, that there is a magic number or critical mass that will move the Almighty in our favor. We feel the pressure to adequately make the case that a newborn ba baby or teenager with cancer or a grandfather in a coma should get a reprieve. We ask God to save them from God. Isn't that interesting? So... And I'm not saying I'm against prayer. No, no, no. But, but isn't so that an that's what I'm saying. So this is what I love about this. This is, yes. I said this, was this on Christina's podcast? I said prayer. No, Jack, I don't know who it was. I yeah, can't remember, I, but it yeah. was, we were talking about prayer and how they said, well, prayer, I can't even remember. But what I, yeah. I, I just remember what I had said was I had had a conversation recently with a friend that was prayer isn't to change God. It's to change us. Yes. So if I say I'm praying for you during this difficult time, yes. but of course I feel like I'm going to tell God that like, oh, God, this is what we want, you know, like, this is what we yeah. want. but it's more like pray for her. Like she's going through this hard time. So help her, her heart, you know, like, and so I'm putting out, I feel like it's kind of the, like you just said, putting out the good things of like, I want her to have these things and I want this to go well. But at the end of, like you said, at the yeah. end of the day, we're not going to change God. And, right. who, you know, to think that we're going to change God from but, God or we're going to, yeah, exactly. But to change us and our heart and that <gasps> prayer is about us. It's I funny. It's not about you. It's about changing our love heart. love that. And, it's, and you know what? Yeah. When you're praying from them, you are, you're taking the focus away from your own daily mm -hmm. thoughts and putting on and that. you're putting on the other and then you person. tie that into energy yes so i feel like this is where oh, i yeah, feel like the connected. faith and the energy all oh, is starting to make one, sense to me and you don't absolutely. have to be one or the other it's yes. that we pray to god and to change our hearts or to you know like to do that so we yes. so that's the prayer and then the putting out that we want healing and things like that yeah. i think that just comes down to the energy of that because when people have been in hard times they say i can feel people praying for me yeah and like the quote said, I don't think it's that it's moving the needle that God's suddenly like, oh, we hit the right number. We're going to – it's right. just that it's giving – that our energy – like we live in a world with vibrations and yes. things like that. And that's why I think it was Jacqueline that said something about dogs having – I was like – because I kind of thought before, like, I don't know how I feel about this whole energy thing. And then yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, you're right. Dogs do sense energy. So if we're all praying for someone, yes. I do think it sends like a positive energy, energy to them. Energy to them. But yeah. God's God. God is the same. He was. He is. He and will be. And you know be. what? And he's and they're probably he's sending them on the path of the earth or the universe or whatever mm -hmm. they're supposed yeah. to be on. But then by you being asked to consider them and put them in mm -hmm. your thoughts and to, it changes to hope, us. Yeah. it changes us and it changes them because they're being considered by the people around them and they're mm. being loved by the people around them, which will mm -hmm. in turn bring them up no matter the end result of whatever is going to mm -hmm. happen to them. And I mm. think that that's great. We're with very we, like, feel, we feel yes, we need to be on the Theology, the guys' podcast. Yeah, we, do. Um, we could just check. Tag well, that's in. I think why people's faith gets shaken is because it's like, yeah. why is my prayer? Why do you save this person and not this person? And it gets very convoluted. Yes, so. and it's true because it's like you know what you're not. That, that's not up to you. Mm -hmm. That's not your choice. But what you what is up to you is all in your intent, maybe mm -hmm. in. I don't know where I'm going, but the energy, yeah. everything that you just said is yeah. what is up to you. But yeah, it's starting to like kind of connect better for me yes. than it used to. Like I it's agree. making more sense. Yeah. It's, I mean, I've always felt like there's just a beautiful blend 
And mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. It is. That's a nice, I think we, we kind of se- we said it pretty good. So did so, you have anything else to say about um, oh, yeah. being an opportunist? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. And then Jeremy, did you have any questions? Cause oh, besides yeah, honey, video gaming, any... well, you know, you can ask those. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Cause so let's see. So a couple of notes that I had, you guys talked about girls mm-hmm. not being as good at math and science. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we did. But I feel like I heard all the time growing up, like, girls are smarter than boys. Yeah. Yes. You did. You heard that. Why did – who did you hear that from? Probably my mom. So, from girl- <laughs> No, but here's – this is what's interesting. His oh. mom – hopefully I'm not outing yeah. our mothers. Yes. But his mom and my mom were both valedictorian of their classes. <gasps> so we were both yeah. raised by very intelligent women. Very women. strong women. And I – and it's funny. I never knew that with him because I feel like I was also raised with a mentality of like, uh, girls are smarter than boys. Like, I <gasps> just – and so that and that so, both stems from your mom's being the smartest, yeah, in their class. And but my still. aunt on my dad's side, she was also she valedictorian. Was also valedictorian. So valedictorian. We have That's smart people. In the family what can I say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you really, <laughs> you're really a veered producer. off. <laughs> <laughs> you're a producer now. You're really smart. Come on. And that brings me to another point that I I was going to ask about yes. uh, leveling up. You talked yes. about like. You went into this finance business and Googled like every five minutes, how do yes. you know, what's this, what's that? So you had the ability to, to teach yourself this stuff. Yes. Right? Yes. I have the same ability. Yes, you do. The same superpower, if you will. Yes, yes, he does. Because I Googled stuff like how to start a podcast. What do we do? So, yes. so funny. Okay. So, oh, no, honey, you go. Three months ago, four months ago. I would have known nothing about any of this. But do you remember what was happening? So a few months ago, I said, I think I should do a podcast. Like that feels like the next step. I don't know what it's going to lead to, but that's the next step. So I started Googling it. Yeah. And I started getting very overwhelmed with the – All the stuff. The the stuff, the technical and the – and it's like – I can't think of the creative side of how to connect with people, how to connect with this and then worry about this. And so I finally said, hey, if I slash we – it, no, actually, I should say, if I'm going to do this, I need us to do this. I love and that. And he was willing, thank the Lord, to take over. And exactly, he's just like, boom, boom, boom. And, and you just dove in. Yeah. yeah. And, and learned it. It was sort of oh, like wow. a nice thing to learn. Like, I like you to like learn learning. how to do different things, whether it's like, mm-hmm. like I wanted to learn how to do blacksmithing that I never <gasps> did before. Do you, you watch know. the the Forge show? No. I we don't have, we don't oh. have um, cable, but Kate told oh, us no, about we that because her um, husband... I think it's, it's on Netflix. Oh, is it now? Oh, oh. I think. Oh, I think it is. Wait, no, we no, watched YouTube. it. We did watch it. Didn't Netflix, YouTube, yes. or Hulu. Those Where are they the like make things. things? Oh, no, the glass blowing show. That's yes. what we watch. We watch oh, the glass a, blowing show. There's a Forge show. Yeah, my, yeah. my husband watches it all yeah. the time. Kate's husband loves it. And I'm like, yes. and Jeremy, he was watching so videos. Then it. So like, would love it. Hey, you know, I, I was feeling kind of stale. I, I yeah. haven't done much with the barn recently. So that's where like my workshop is, where I want to have this area to create things and make things. Yeah. But it's kind of a mess right now. I need to go clean it up, but that's not my strength. I just need to buckle down and do it. Right. Remember when we cleaned up and organized and I totally helped you organize the garage? Yeah, it was great. It was I was very life. proud of myself, yeah, like my skills. Disarray, so. But yes. still we made, we had like you, the separate bins and <gasps> helped them organize and it was awesome. So then I, so I was feeling <laughs> I kind of organizing. stale with my creativity and then this opportunity presents itself. And mm. I'm like, oh, you seized yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's do that. I wonder mm-hmm. where you were to lead up to that. Like what? Because you probably had to do some something to open up that door to say, I'm totally on board. I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Yeah. yeah. I think one, There's I would an say you. I was. It's so funny you said that. I was actually just about yes. to say that you were doing the small group, the men's small group with the guys from church. Yeah. And what was the book or topic? Uh, yeah. Great and Beautiful God. Yeah. But part nice. of it was like connecting I don't know if it was like connect. specifically connecting to your spouse or that just came up. And, yeah, but something came up in the conversation. Like, to connect. But I think that you're just with people that are kind of like wanting to make your marriage a focus and a priority. And so then with this, do. it's like, oh, even if this isn't his thing, it's like this is an opportunity for us to do to this do together. Yeah. So. And I and I, I do feel like you guys, when you do talk, you both talk on the podcast. It is so much fun to really? listen to. That's I so think funny. so. I I really love it. Good. I think it's I'm like a, a good dynamic. So. Well, so what I love about this. We don't do it much. Maybe we should do it. Uh, we could do we an should episode. do it more yeah. often. It, I, I'm like, oh, they talked. Oh, it's that's fun. funny. <laughs> yeah. I, um, so 
<laughs> the way I got the job with Spectrum is and he did it at the beginning of Megan's. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good. Um, oh yeah, that, that was, was a good, good intro. Start, and that we could do more intros and yeah, say like, "Hey, this is." But when he was yeah. going to work with Spectrum, oh, no, no, I'm yeah. sorry, he wanted to go back out into the construction world because he likes creating. Yeah. But I was nervous because I've seen that he likes creating his own thing, not creating things under other people's direction. Yeah. So I was a little yeah. nervous, and but I felt like we should do a business together because we've got different skills, and you know, we want we love each other, we want to work together. Yes. But the more I saw, I was like, you know what? Neither of us like to be stressed. Yeah. Neither of us this. And that just felt like this is going to be a breeding ground for stress. Yes, he wouldn't you truly could sense be happy. It before it started. Yeah. yeah. But I Very also felt like it. we needed to let it play out. And so it See? did. Yeah. He ended up getting the job um, where he's at now. Yeah. Which is a better fit. But then I was still able to go with Spectrum, which put me in with everyone. Wouldn't have met yes. you had I not done that. Wouldn't yes. be here. With, oh my gosh. And now like <gasps> this is much more our alley. And it's like, yes, if this could be our full-time thing and maybe we could make money doing it yep. and he could quit his job, like that would maybe be awesome because it's more natural. Every, right. Everyone's. Uh, but like this yeah. is such a better fit than us running a construction business where like we're just – that's just not us. Yeah. I, you would you agree? Yeah, yeah. So it is. It, that a lot runs of into the whole thing of like, you don't want your hobby maybe to be your job because then right. the, the joy gets sucked out of it. Yeah. Right. There's stress attached to it and you depend on it for your livelihood and it really just, so. Yeah. Yeah. I like creating things. So, but I if it. I were to get back into construction, it would become a job and I would be like, it would need to be right. like you build something and sell it. Would like, you would you say you can't have the hobby become the job because you get to stay remained detached from the outcome? So then it stays more pure into yourself. Like you know what I mean. Say that one more time. Yes. Like so so that you you don't want the hobby to be the job because you're detached from the outcome. That's like back to the. Oh, that's the like ego I, I'm always telling people. I'm like, uh -huh. it's just a passion project. Right. Like, I'm not worried about it doing anything because it's yes. just a fun thing I'm doing. And right. so from it can be, it can grow from yeah, like a really beautiful place. Yeah. Oh, In the beginning of this whole thing, I've, I've tried to keep the mindset of this is a hobby. I like what you said because I yes, yeah. like I said, I said I feel like it's in the passion project stage, and that I. I haven't wanted this to turn into a full time thing unless it yeah. organically happens. Does it? And like I said, not to say that we won't do strategic things or smart things, but you like gotta approach things. That but way. I don't yeah. want to force it because right. then it'll just feel. What's it's, the point? It's very much coming from like I feel like from both of you guys. If I could imagine, let's go woo woo, let's go aura. I love it. It's like coming from both of you as like a beautiful like. <sighs> like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> like, like, wait, that was called Star Wars, right? Oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, well, they talk about Chewbacca. the forces, the forces, the light and the dark forces, yes. and you know, it it's coming works. from a Chewbacca place, no. <laughs> from a true Chewbacca place. <laughs> but like, I just feel like it's like a place of like you guys are just you're just doing, and you're and it's awesome. And thank you. I can't wait. Like, I just feel like. When people stay true into their into their the me zone, the detached zone that is mm. the importance is already there before you're doing it. Is I don't know. That's mm. love it. I love it. And then I guess so. We we did have like a spoiler of let's talk about opportunities real yeah. quick in the after show. There was only one okay, that I really good. want to talk about that I thought I had to take. So my when I moved from Centerville to Warrington, mm -hmm. I was. In my one job, my tutoring job, mm -hmm. and I had to take the opportunity with the startup. And all I will say was that was the hardest opportunity I had to take that I knew was right for me that I had to seize. And if I didn't seize it, I would be on a longer road. How did you know? I knew because of all of, basically, it was like a domino effect of we bought our house. I gave a talk. I had like a basic interview. I was not happy where I was in my old job. But there was like this big challenge of I really care about people. And in my old job, there was a lot going on in my boss's life mm -hmm. that if I were to have left, it would have been a terrible thing. Mm. And I had to choose what was best you know how like we for always you. want it. Yeah, yeah, for me. And you, we always want to put our arms around everybody and mm -hmm. make everyone feel good. And I couldn't mm. in that instance because I I couldn't. 
and the, and the, there was just there was a lot more under the surface going on there for me at that time but it was the hardest opportunity that I had to take that I knew I had to take where when you are doing change and growth mm-hmm. it's never going to be like I'm going to comfortably step into this no. it is going to be I'm going to uncomfortably sobbing crying in the bathroom come out with a smile step into this and mm-hmm. do the best I freaking can yeah it's change is not easy no yeah change if it's is true not change easy. it's it's not yeah. Yeah. So yes. that was, I guess that's my only thing that I wanted to yeah, add into the, the after show with the, the it's It's another discussion. one of those kind of contrasting things where like, you know, walk through the doors that are naturally opened and keep taking the next right step. So, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to just be that. It, do, it might not look like that. It might, it's hindsight yeah. where it might look like that easy, but at the time it's that painful. Like, I mean, I yes. like I said, for, for my job, it was... Had I not done that, it would not lead me to be doing this fun thing. Yeah. But when I took that job, it was, you know, is this the right thing? And da, da, da. And I, you know, I still went through all those questions. It wasn't just yeah. like, oh, this is the next thing. I still had that moment of questioning and things like that. Like a friction moment. Mm-hmm. Oh, the friction. Yes. <gasps> Back to the friction. Yes. Moving Frickin forward. Friction. Yeah. Friction, <laughs> friction. Friction. That's the theme of today. <laughs> yes. Moving forward. I love yes. that. Oh, so anyway, what do you think, Jeremy, with opportunities for growth? You've had jobs, you've had your job opportunities that have well, it has changed. to feel right too. If mm-hmm. it feels wrong, don't do it. Yeah, like if you're yeah. doing it for the right reasons, like on The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if your motivations right are <laughs> are where you want them to be, go for it. Right. Yeah. But if I know that I could get a job that pays more, right? I could make more money. Doing the same thing I'm doing with another company. Right. I like where I am because I get the flexibility it, to it, to do things kind of the way I want and have good benefits. I I have a pretty set right. schedule. I go to work, start at seven, stop at three thirty. Right. It aligns I'm, with I'm your home values. at a, yeah, a it time aligns with your values. every yeah. day. There's the you know, same time more or less every day. Yeah. And you know there, mm-hmm. there's opportunity. Yeah, I work from home on Fridays, so yeah, it's fantastic. I I could lose that if I go someplace. Else. But you tried the yeah. other thing. So he, you were in a position where you had a similar style job, mm-hmm. then he left to try out like the other side, mm-hmm. and then it was like, wait, this doesn't align with his core values because it's just it's just not, too much time yeah. away from. Yeah, that makes. I mean, and you sometimes do have to step out. To taste, like I guess, get the taste of it. And it to, was definitely to, to decide yeah. what because now is he knows, like he was unsatisfied in his old job. Yeah. Then he really liked the new one until it was like, wait, this does not align. And so I feel like it, it yeah. wasn't like a step backward. It was everything was still a step forward because it helped him right. figure out what was right for him. And I would say that's like with college. We talked the other day with Deb about kind of the college experience and the mm-hmm. good and bad and the lessons learned and that it yeah. you know it might feel like a unsuccessful thing if you didn't do well yeah but it's still an opportunity you right. still absolutely. learned from it so like i went to virginia oh, tech absolutely. because that's the engineering school i right. was like math that's science right. engineering that's right. what i wanted to do in college i have mm-hmm. to go to virginia tech in my mind because that's the engineering school in the mm-hmm. state of virginia right it like checks off the box and mm-hmm. but i never go. took the time to realize that okay Every school offers math and science and engineering. Yeah. What's best for you? Why Why am I not fig- yeah, figuring out what's best for me and, and doing that, going to that school maybe? You're, I have as to As opposed say. to just saying, no, I, I'm narrow, you know, I have my blinders on and this is where I have to go. I think a lot mm-hmm. of kids do that. Mm-hmm. Do you want to know how I chose my school? The colors. Darts. No. <laughs> my, three darts my, and a map. Uh, kind of. My aunt. Um, so I bought a sweatshirt on a whim. I had like a store that had like all the colleges in New York on it. And I was like, oh God, what college am I going to buy a sweatshirt of? This is like, I was like a sophomore. I was like, oh yeah, my aunt went to Geneseo. I'll buy a Geneseo sweatshirt. And this is like, soon Geneseo was like the big teaching school. I did want to be a teacher. Mm. So I chose Geneseo that I bought that sweatshirt. I looked at it and I'm like, what? when it came time to applying, I applied only to Geneseo. What? There was no safety school. Oh I got waitlisted, so then I did community college first, wow. and then that was a really smart idea financially. Heck I actually yeah. had a lot less student debt. But I didn't research at Anything. all. I was so overwhelmed that I was like, nope, this is blinders, it. Geneseo, you're it. 
I think I kind of want to be a teacher. Let's do this. Yep. That was it. So many kids do that. They zone but in because But when you so got nervous. there, how did it go? It went great. It See, was like, that's it was the perfect. Thing. Yeah. Exactly. So well, I was, it was like actually all over the place really, but, but still yeah. it was a great kind but of if it, for the place. But if it, yeah. And so I yeah. would say with Jeremy, that would have worked okay, but not, we've talked a lot about not being afraid to change. So it's, I feel like, yeah. okay, it's fine that he went to tech, yeah. but to have gotten there and said, you know what, this, I'm glad I didn't leave because that's how we know each other and everything. Yeah. But to say, I Yeah, I didn't change. understand the expectations of what tech yeah. would be for me. Yeah. Maybe yeah. if I had understood that, it would have gone differently, but. I think that in that in that youth spot that everyone is before they go to college, mm-hmm. I don't think you can understand mm-hmm. without difficult. doing yeah. it. Well, yeah, like you just yeah. can't get you can't like get your brain up. Uh, you can't level up without going through. Yeah. Like you know, you got to go through the level. Come but on, we pivoting. Play. Like we talk yeah. a lot Let's about cheat codes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheat codes. Yeah. I love cheat it. Codes. <laughs> cheat codes. Another reference. I know. I can't. Yeah. Now we're just going down the rabbit hole oh. here. <laughs> if Jeremy and I get started on puns, or you know, yeah. wordplay, we'll be here all day. Yeah. Um, but the the experiences that I had to draw from for college were my my mom and my dad, right? Yeah. My mom who didn't go to college, and my dad who did and wound up starting to flunk out. But then, uh, the draft for Vietnam started, and oh he gosh. would have had to be in the draft if he wasn't a a like full time student. So, if he flunked out, he was going to go to war. Wow. Talk about so, that. Yeah. That, was, that was his motivation wow. for like, I need to straighten up and, and yeah. get my grades right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Otherwise, mm, You're gonna I'm going to have to go to Vietnam. Wow. What a time. What? So those were limited so, in, in my... You you've know, never the, told me that. So I didn't know that about your dad. And so that makes sense that you just yeah. kept going back to tech because he would come home and then go back for a few uh-huh. years uh-huh. that you just kept being like, I just need to put my nose down and do it. Just like my dad did. Like yeah. he just, just, he just, just leveled up. He just did it. Le- level up and finish. But We're I never after- leveled up. Well, th- yeah. but that's the thing. finished. But that's uh, but the still. thing. But when we talked but you- about it for years after we yeah. came to the point where it was like, you know, the simple obvious answer was you should have like gone to the community college, right. like come home, taking classes mm-hmm. at County, taking a break, gone and just did like George Mason living at home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like, but he just kept going back, and it's like the definition of insanity where you keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Yes. and But that makes sense now. I never knew that with your dad that, like, yeah. you just had that we example of he was struggling, but he just went we, back and did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that worked. That's great. And that might be the answer for some. But for you, it did. what was wrong? Why weren't you succeeding at tech? If your dad wasn't just succeeding because he wasn't taking it seriously, all he yeah. needed to do was take it seriously. Right. For you, my opinion theory is that, like, he thrives more in a smaller space. Yeah. And without like looking at that and figuring it out, you just, it's the definition yeah. of insanity. I have to say my community college education was 10,000 times better than my four-year school education. Mm-hmm. I had so much one-on-one time with my professors. Mm-hmm. I had, it was amazing. Everything I learned that I remembered that I learned and everyone tells me I'm a great writer, all community college. Oh, Everything nice. for my four year school. Like I had a, a statistics professor who showed up, read straight from the book and left and was never at his office hours. And I oh. was like, I barely passed because I figured out how to program my calculator the most, of course, ethical, best way possible to pass the right. class. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you knew how to do yeah. that, good for you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a I big proponent desperate. of yeah. community college too. I took classes yeah. at Nova. Yeah. When I was working. Uh, um, another previous job, I guess I won't say, but after tech. Yeah. But if I wanted to advance at that company, you had to. I had to take classes. I needed to get some sort of a degree if it was an associate's yeah. at tech or uh, right. at Nova. Something. Or yeah. eventual BS. Right. Yeah. But and the classes I took at Nova were, I don't okay. want to say better than the ones I took at tech, but, no. but better my for motivations you. were different. And, and the inst- but the instruction was was it, yeah or more more one on one. I think it was he a little was bit more one on one. Yeah, not even that because he took an online course that he had to teach himself. Mm-hmm. I think it's that you Chemistry. were you were one of thirty in a class, mm-hmm. not one of three hundred. Mm-hmm. That and is you huge. step up when people notice and know see who you what are you're doing. And yeah. Communicate. Mm-hmm. And it's an accountability thing. When you're one of 300, you're less accountable because who's going to notice? And then if you're one of 30, they're going to notice and you're like, well, I better be a 
pretty good student, I guess. Yeah. yeah. People okay. are watching. There's well, that's rewards like... for being a good student, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scholarships. Yeah. Yeah. True. Very true. But that's like with, so, for me with health, like if it's, if I'm not being accountable to anyone with my health goals, yeah. then it's like, eh, if I'm by myself, like, well, who cares? It's just my body, myself. And, yeah. but if I'm being accountable, then it's suddenly like, oh, people are noticing or, and helping, you know, it's in a good productive way, but I can't yes. just say, eh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's the equivalent of, I don't need to go to class today. They're not going to notice I'm gone. I can yeah. eat this. I cannot exercise because who cares? It's just me. I'm the only one who will know. One hundred percent. What a great wrap plus, up! What a plus. great yeah. boom done. Yes. Our work here is done. Yes. I'm glad to finally give back to you all that you've been giving to me. So thank God. So much, you guys. I'm like, I swear to God, I'm like, I'm gonna like, I don't even know. I gotta go do like a video diary after this. I'm just so glad this is recorded because whether <laughs> yeah. we air it or not, we can like send this to, to you. Me. Yeah. Oh Can't wait to see you on so YouTube. Good. Level up, Gretch. Yes, yes. Level, level up, Gretch. Gretch. Oh my gosh, you guys. My whole life, everyone's been like, "That's what you are. That's that's who you are, and you've got a problem." And so maybe that's it's not, what you it's are. So don't run from that. That's yes. who you are. I'm good at hanging out with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're good at leveling up. Glad you're Here strengths. we are. Ah. Oh. I, I'm I'm clapping everybody. Yes, that's what that weird noise was. <laughs> <laughs> if it translated, ah, yay! <sighs> Thank you. This Thank was you. awesome. Thank oh. you, Jeremy. Thank you, Gretchen. Yeah. Another great podcast. Another great Smiling great. ear to ear. Ear to ear. Got the cheek workout. We'll eventually get these on video and do all that. But one step. See, yes. it's one, one step, step at, at a time. time. I can't do too much. Right. You can like only it. do at the pace that. Yes. Whatever you can just yeah. do though. Just yeah. do something. Just do, just do like, something. Yeah. yeah. Just like, I mean, we can't say like it or Nike. else Nike. Yeah, yeah. we can't yeah. say yeah. just do it. We'll just stop at do. Just do. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just do. 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 Do, do. Oh, just do, do. And then that ties in with fleshing it out. Just do, do. I love just it. Do. Oh, my God. Do. Just do. 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 Just do, guys. Just yeah. do. Just do yeah. the do. period and then do. do. Period. Do. Just, just do. 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 Yeah. Just do it. Do it. Doop. And scene. And scene. This is awesome. And that's a wrap for now. Thanks for listening to Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle. Music provided by twinmusicom.org. Song titled Night at the Dance Hall. Sound editing by me, Jeremy Spittle. A special thanks to our studio sponsor, M&M Exteriors. Visit their website at mmexteriors.com for all of your roofing, siding, and gutter needs in the Northern Virginia area. Visit our website at flushingitout.com and be sure to subscribe. This has been a Spitfire production. That was the greatest thing I've ever heard.